Yo, YouTube, what's good? It's your boy Steph. Back with another video. Back with another banger. Back with another video. Back with another banger. Y'all, it is six o'clock in the morning, and your boy is coming to y'all with a reaction video. The ten most terrifying, terrifying, uninhabited places on Earth where people actually live, y'all. Now, let's let y'all know I am like a, a Earth person like this. If you want to see, like. I like watching stuff about play uh, unknown stuff and, and new facts. I say, y'all. So we gonna jump straight into this, man. Hope y'all like this video. Hope y'all sub up to that channel. Matter of fact, I'm gonna hope I know y'all gonna sub up to the channel because y'all ready for them beta toys. But yeah, I am a little sick too, so I go here a little no sniffling. But we are gonna react to this video, man. Get straight into it. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to that channel, the toy. Let's get into it, y'all in the world all the way to some of the coldest with a lake that sits in a volcanic crater in between. These places are absolutely astonishing. Here are the top 10 terrifying uninhabitable places on earth where people actually live. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot we have alert. <laughs> Just wanted to say alert. Alert is a small settlement located on the northern tip of Ellesmere Island in Nunavut, Canada. It is considered one of the northernmost settlements in the world and is also one of the most inhospitable environments on the planet. The area is characterized by extremely low temperatures, harsh winds, and long periods of darkness during the winter months. Despite these challenges, people still live in alert. The settlement was established in 1950 as a weather station and military outpost during the Cold War. Since then, it has remained an important monitoring station for climate change. It was a military lookout, basically, for... Bro, it was a military lookout, basically, for the war. And people want to live there? military activities in the Arctic region. The population of Alert fluctuates depending on the season, but there are typically around 50 people who live and work there. The residents are mostly military personnel, scientists, and support staff who work at the station. They face numerous challenges such as limited supplies, extreme isolation, and the constant threat of polar bear encounters. Despite these challenges, the Couldn't imagine living like that. Encountered a polar bear almost every day. We limited on resources. We don't see anybody that we know that we grew up with. Unless they've been there their whole lives, then that's different. But if they move there, moving there is wild. People who live in Alert are proud of their unique community and the important work that they do. They have developed a strong sense of camaraderie and resilience that is necessary for survival in such an extreme environment. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Danakil Depression. We are going from one extreme to the other. The Danakil Depression is a part of the Afar Triangle in Ethiopia and is a geological depression that came about as a result of Africa and Asia moving apart. The divergence of three tectonic plates caused rifting and volcanic activity. This place is the hottest place on Earth in terms of average year-round temperatures, and it is also one of the lowest places on Earth at 100 meters below sea level. There are active volcanoes in the area, there are salt springs, sulfur springs, and it only gets about 4 to 8 inches of rain every year. What I'm saying is that this place is stunning and has an incredibly rich geological history, but it also fully looks like it could be from another planet. This otherworldly landscape and quite inhospitable environment is the home to the Afar people. People. Somehow they have overcome the odds and the obstacles and managed to thrive in this extreme environment And it is said that this was made possible over the centuries by their ability to adapt to need less food and water than other humans Honestly, it's one of the most remarkable things I've ever heard The Danakel Depression is a popular destination for adventurous travelers who are seeking an experience that is truly out of this world Visitors can explore the area on foot or by camel taking in the breathtaking views of the alien-like landscape all right, so I'm about to have to fix the audio. And plants that have also adapted to this very unique environment. In our number eight spot today, we have Kabwe. Located in Zambia, Kabwe. this place has been described as the world's most toxic town. The toxins what? in this town are due to the previous century of mining and smelting, which led to generations being exposed to unbelievable amounts of toxins and a mass lead poisoning. The plants Damn. closed in 1994, but at that point, the damage had already been done. The population of 220 
20,000 people that still live here are still exposed to lead in the dust and soil that is 10 times the U.S. safety limit, but they stay Jeez. out of necessity. At this point in time, the World Bank is now conducting a $65 million remediation project, and while that is great news, unfortunately, nothing can be done for all of the people who had to deal with this for the last century and a half. In our number seven spot today, we have Omeokan. This place is located in Russia, and if you've heard of it before, there's a chance it might be because it is known as the coldest inhabited place on Earth. This town has a population of around 500 residents who live in an average temperature of around negative 40 degrees Celsius, although in the summertime, the temperature does get to around zero. The ground is covered, covered in permafrost, which of course makes growing crops an impossibility, so the main source of food is meat and fish. Due to the temperature here, living, of course, has to look a little different. It's too cold for plumbing pipes, so restrooms are usually outhouses. Engines freeze easily, so cars are usually running continuously. And during the shortest yeah. days, the residents live in darkness for 21 hours a day. Getting to this small town can take you quite some time as well. If you're coming from Jeez. Moscow, I don't know why you would be, if you're coming from Moscow, you'll have to take a flight to one of the closest towns, which are both still over 900 kilometers away. The road from these cities that leads to <laughs> town is called the road of bones which is extremely <laughs> ominous sounding and probably a road that should not be traveled alone just in case in our number six spot today we have solar de uni solar de uni is the world's largest salt flat located in the southwest of bolivia near the crest of the andes the area spans over 10,000 square kilometers and is characterized by a stunning otherworldly landscape this peculiar place was formed by the evaporation of a prehistoric lake leaving behind a thick layer of salt crust that stretches as far as the eye can see during the rainy season the salt flat becomes a giant mirror reflecting the sky and clouds in a breathtaking spectacle it is truly unbelievable it looks completely fake and is somehow very real the unique terrain and climate of the area has also given rise to many unusual oh, natural too. formations the flat is dotted with small islands of rock and <coughs> cacti as a haven for a variety of animal species yeah i said giant cacti while this place is mostly devoid of life plant or animal that is safe for these cacti that can grow to be 12 meters or 39 feet tall the area is also Jeez. home to many active geysers and hot springs as well as colorful <laughs> lakes that are filled with flamingos during certain times of year in fact in november this place becomes a feeding ground for three south american species of flamingo feeding on local brine shrimps these are the chilean andean and rare james flamingos aside from its natural wonders this place is also rich in cultural history this area has been inhabited by the indigenous amara people for thousands of years and they have maintained their traditional way of life and culture okay. to this day. In our number five spot today, we have Itorkotomi. This town is located what in one of the most remote me? areas of Greenland and actually requires a helicopter ride from the nearest airport in order to actually get to the town. It was founded quite recently, actually, Why in 1925 by a Danish polar yeah, explorer and around 80 Inuit settlers, and it is about as far as you can get from any other inhabited area oh, in Greenland. Not, Despite this recent settling based on ruins and other archaeological remains, it became clear that this area was I'm once inhabited sometimes time in our history by Inuit I populations of the past. Is. There's around 450 residents and the town is known for its wildlife that includes polar bears, musk oxen, and seals. This place can be a popular tourist destination because of the stunning northern lights as well as other natural wonders. Cruise ships also love to stop here, but that can be a little tricky considering nine months out of the year, sea ice will block any ship from docking. In our number four spot today, we have La Rinconada. This town La is located Rinconada. near the Peruvian Andes. Very close to a gold mine it is actually the highest permanent settlement in the world at 5,100 meters above sea level between Jeez. 2001 and 2009 the population of this town increased greatly because the price of gold rose 235 percent yo my boy calling he called me hung up he telling me to get on for the stream, yeah. I told y'all I was five in the morning. During that time. Because of the elevation, the town has an alpine tundra climate and an average temperature of around one degree Celsius. The city has no running water or sewage, and the population of people who live here are working themselves to the bone in extremely yeah, dangerous no mercury-filled mines. They're also working under some pretty horrible conditions where they work 25 days of the month for no pay, and then five days of the month they can work for themselves, and they are allowed to take as much 
ore as they can carry on their shoulders. There is no guarantee that the ore will have any gold in it, however. And this terrible system is why many of the town's residents live in poverty. The town is a six-hour bus ride from the nearest city on unpaved roads, and there isn't really a regular bus schedule, which makes it a fairly difficult place to get to. In our number three spot today, we have Lake Neos. Lake Neos is located in Cameroon, and it is different from any regular old lake because of the volcanic crater that it sits in. The magma floor releases carbon dioxide into both the water and the surrounding air, making it a less than ideal place to live and breathe. Usually the CO2 just dissipates into the air, mostly harmlessly, but in 1986 there was a limnic eruption that caused catastrophe. A limnic eruption is very rare, but it's what happens when dissolved carbon dioxide suddenly erupts from lake waters, which then goes on to form a gas cloud. The resulting gas cloud is extremely dangerous, it is capable of displacing the oxygen in the area, which of course is lethal to any living thing in the area, which is exactly what happened in 1986. This limnic eruption caused a noxious cloud of more than 1 million tons of CO2. This ended up taking the lives of the 1,700 people in the area, as well as the 3,500 livestock, which made it the first known large-scale asphyxiation caused by a natural event. Despite the threat of another eruption, as well as the lake's weakening walls that could result in a massive flood, people have resettled the area around the lake. I'm not gonna lie, I wouldn't risk it, which makes me wonder why these people chose here. I'm yeah. sure there's gotta be a reason. In our number two spot today, right, we have La true. Oroya. Located in Peru, this town has a population of 30,000 so people, Peru. despite the 30, metal 000. smelter contamination that has been seen since 1922. The smelter closed in 2009 small, after the company that ran it declared bankruptcy, but here's how that happened in the first place. 30, the American-owned company ran out of money because they had to fund the environmental cleanup and the anti-pollution measures. Okay. Seems like maybe they should have chosen a different path. Seems like it didn't pay off to pollute someone else's air. I guess that they forgot that there's consequences for actions. It still remains as one of the most polluted areas in the entire world, and the toxic metals have gone on to infect the water, the soil, and the air. While it is completely Jeez. unsafe to live there, people still do, and sadly, they suffer the extreme adverse effects of it. In our number one spot today, we have Zabol. The city is located in Iran, and it is an Zabol? absolute hot spot for dust storms. The summer season is where the worst of it is seen, Maybe with what so is known as the, quote, 120-day winds. This is when Dust and I'm thinking she about to say something about like a hot or cold, bro. 120 speed winds. Boy, you can't walk outside normal bombards the city, which is due to the disappearance of the wetlands, as well as the extremely high temperatures seen in the region. These dust storms aren't just inconvenient, they're actually very dangerous for those who live in the area. So much so that every year, officials hand out thousands of air pollution masks to help prevent the damage that these storms can cause to the lungs. In 2016, the city was named as the most polluted city in the world by the World Health Organization, and a study in 2017 even found that the damage from breathing this air for 30 minutes outweighs the benefit of 30 minutes of cycling, meaning it is exceptionally detrimental. Damn. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I will see you again soon. Bye. Thank you, Olivia Kozlowski. I like how she is playing and everything and broken down, y'all. Look, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know which one that was, y'all, but Lake y Yato or YouTube, whatever it was, y'all. A lake that literally inside of it gas comes out because of the carbon dioxide of the lake and you cannot control nothing like you don't have no control that lake can explode one day if it <laughs> bro this is crazy but I love like y'all yeah, keep uh, coming in uh, videos like this man I love nature any animal videos any like animal anything y'all anything about the world anything about lost places stuff like that y'all put it in the comments i'm gonna react to all oh, love it man because i love reacting and stuff like that man. nah that's gonna be it for this video man make sure y'all boys like comment and subscribe man i do videos like this every single day man, but i love y'all boys y'all boys make sure y'all stay safe and stay clean and about y'all boys peace